Bike Shed, the place to get your hot takes on products and learn everything about bikes. So from how-tos to bike reviews. Uh, my name is Devin. I am... <laughs> what, would you, what would you call yourself? My name's Peter. Uh, I have quite a lot of experience in the bike industry, working in a bunch of shops. Um, so I like to think I know what I'm talking about. Possibly not, but I like to think so. Devin. Um, I am the new head of content at Bicycles Online. So we're going to run through a couple of products that we have at Bikes Online. Um, it's also a change of season, so it's, it's de all of these products are, are definitely relevant. First one is going to be your tires. So as soon as it gets a little bit wet and stroppy, like we've been having in Sydney, rear tires are looking a pretty be a bit bald from uh, skidding out some rocks. Mm. It's a good chance to change them over. They are hard to find, so I wouldn't be surprised if Bikes Online is one of the few people that has the tire that you want in stock. A good one that I've been running is uh, the V-Tire uh, Snap WCE. Uh, this tire has really strong sidewall, so it's a gravity-based sidewall, perfect for the rocks in Sydney. Tread on the on the rubber is is quite spiky. Let's let's get it out. Let's have a look. All right. So, got a nice deep spiky uh, tread, plenty of traction. Soft side knobs, whatever on wants. More durable mid knobs, so they last a little bit longer. And you got that got that strong side wall I was talking about. And they are in stock, which is which is a good thing for tires because they're they're hard to find. We've also got the classic. This is the the Maxxis Minion DHR2. This has been around for, I mean, longer than me, almost. It's been the go-to rear tire for any kind of gravity, enduro, let's say, let's say hardcore kind of mountain biking. Um, this is in stock. It's got soft tread on the side, hard tread in the middle. That's our Max Terra, what they call it for their, for their rubber compound. Very durable, but at a different price point to the V. So if you're looking at getting a new tire, but you see the price of a Maxxis, maybe it's a bit too high for what you were thinking, then uh, then why not try out a V tire? Um, they've been pretty good for me, and and the price point makes them really attractive at the moment, especially if it's something that you wear out. Quality-wise, what is the difference? Being a roadie and not familiar sure. with these, what's the difference between this tire and this tire? For me, yeah. I think it's brand. Brand? So Makes sense. People know what Maxxis is. It's, it's a known quantity in the mountain bike community. I mean, I would say even in Australia, it's, it's very well known. Maxxis is, is the standard that, that most people would use. V is a company that's been around for quite a long time. They've been making tires for other people under different labels, so they know about, about rubber. Uh, they're getting a little bit more popular and, and a bit of notoriety being uh, supporters of the intense downhill mm -hmm. uh, factory team. So they're legit uh, in that sense. Uh, they do own their own factory and produce their own tires so, so that you have a, a good, good supply chain behind the product, do all their own engineering. Um, and that's, that's why I, I run them on my bike because they have a good price point and the product is as good, I think, as a big name brand like Maxxis or Victoria, Continental, anyone else like that. And they're available in stock. Which, which is good. Again, yeah. hard to get. <laughs> you kind of sound like a brand ambassador. <laughs> I know, I know. I don't, I don't want to sound like that, but, uh, but after using them, and um, I've been on Maxxis for many, many, many years, and it just got to a point where I didn't want to keep, I couldn't afford to keep spending that money, so I thought I'd try something else. I'm, I mean, I'm, I might go back, see how they go, but it's worth, worth trying something out. Now that, we're, I mean, now that we're changing seasons, maybe your tires are worn out. Why not try something different? See how it goes. Cool. Does that make sense? That does make sense, kind of. <laughs> what about this right here? Um, for me, I run uh, tubed in my road bike. I'm just rim brake revolution. You know, I won't uh, won't change from certain things. <laughs> but when it comes to mountain bikes, tubeless is pretty much it's the standard. It's the standard. Every, everyone uh, everyone's running tubeless or 
some variation of tuples, whether that's things inside or things outside, it's, it's all pretty much tuples now. If you need to use a tube, you don't really want to. So if it's stock standard, this is a tubeless conversion kit. Yes. When you go and get a new bike from, from us, um, it'll have inner tubes in the tires because maybe the bike's been in a box for, for a couple of weeks, been in a hot container, the tires might get a little bit soft, you'll probably need to pump them up, and if we don't give you tubes, you might get uh, flat spots in your tires. So all bikes from us will have tubes inside them, also many other companies. If you're looking to change the way that your bike rides and you're sick of getting punctures, then a tubeless kit is what you're gonna need. So you're gonna wanna make your bike into a tubeless bike. You're gonna need valves that replace the valves that come with your inner tubes. You're gonna need uh, a sealant tape so that seals off the holes that you have in your rim. And you're gonna need some kind of solution that helps fill in any gaps that form when you're, when you're pumping up your tire without an inner tube inside. Sometimes it doesn't quite sit right in certain places. These will come with a, a solution that fills in any small holes. It also means down the track, if you get a small pin prick in your tire, it should hopefully fill in that small hole so you don't uh, need to have a flat tire and put that tube in that you don't want to. Awesome, so this is necessary. Pretty I would much. say it's yeah. necessary, yeah. yeah. Cool. If you've got a mountain bike and you want to take on some tougher tracks or you feel like you're sick, sick of getting flat tires, tubeless is definitely something you've got to, got to go towards. Awesome, so no one likes a flat tire. <laughs> no, even, even road bikes. Even yeah, road even, bikes. even roadies don't. Um, awesome, and lastly, I love GPSs, and this is the Brighton data. 750. Data. I'm obsessed with data, and that might be a roadie thing. What do you think? I mean, it's, it's definitely in mountain biking. Yeah. I mean, I don't look at my data as much as mm. maybe I used to if I did ride on a road bike. Um, but it, it's, it's around. Every, everyone's measuring everything, so yeah. why not do it with a Brighton? Exactly, and then, you know, step on a scale, figure out your watts per kilo. Um, but you need a power meter for that, uh, which we don't have right now. But with the Brighton, again, it's great. Like all GPS systems, you know, you're able to put in routes um, in terms of, you know, where you want to go. You're able to look at your, your wattage, your output, depending on if you have a power meter, heart rate, and so forth. So a, pow um, a power meter is necessary, but definitely a GPS, highly recommended. And you can get mounts. Uh, we do have mounts. Um, all, all sorts of different mounts. You can put it in front, on top. Uh, mm. You can have it on the top of your top tube. That's what I do. So it's, so it's out of the way of the handlebars. Sometimes I leave my bike unintentionally and the handlebars get a bit smashed up. So I, I hide mine on, on the top tube. One thing that might be good to think about if you're on the fence and you've got a new bike, you're, you're new to riding, is if you start to use a a high-tech computer such as this, you can re record your heart rate and you can see if your fitness is improving. Mm. So it's a really easy metric if you have a, a route that you normally do with your friends. You can see how your heart rate's been going over those uh, six or seven weeks that you might have a goal for and see if it's, if it's come down. So it's an easy way to measure your, measure your effort. That's what I use a, a computer for, is normally to measure how tired I am or how uh, unfit I am might be the case. <laughs> but yeah, it's, yeah. It, it helps a lot with, with heart rate, measuring your effort, and, and maps if you want to go on a, on a trip. Um, you put in your route and, and you don't have to pull out your phone and you can save your phone battery for, for those sweet Instapeaks. And that's it. Um, at the end of the day, if you get into mountain biking, or well, sorry, when you get into mountain biking, you will need one of these. And that concludes what's in stock at Bicycles Online. We will have the link in the description below um, so you can check them out. We'll also have direct links to these products. And that concludes that. And we're going to get into onto some, bikes. onto some bikes. And since I'm a roadie and not a mountain biker, which I've said multiple times, <laughs> um, I want to get into mountain biking, but I don't know where to start. And I have a specific budget and I don't want to exceed that budget for the many reasons why all of you probably don't want to exceed it. And we're going to work <laughs> out how we budget. can get past that budget yes. um, and spend more. Because I think, at least in the road scene as well, a lot of the manufacturers 
develop or create their bikes in, in pretty much the same factories. So it's important that you know, you're still getting high quality parts at affordable prices. So we are going to look at how many bikes? I think we've got three. Three? Three, three bikes? bikes? Yeah. Um, we're going to look at those. I'm going to ask some questions that I want to know, which you probably want to know um, because I'm new and you're most likely new to mountain biking. Shall we get into it? Okay. Yeah. Let's do it. Go grab them. All right. Well, first up, we have the 2022 Premier 5. Um, as budget bike under 5k, well under 5k. Yeah, um, yeah. Un under a k. Under a k, yeah. Entry it, level. So to begin with, right, I want to jump on a bike, but where do I start? What am I actually looking for in a mountain bike? I think it's good to start with what, what is a mountain bike? What makes a mountain bike not a commuter bike? We can see on this bike you've got some nice chunky tires, good traction there. You've got small sprockets on the front, good for going up hills. You've got some big sprockets on the back, also for going up those hills. You've got disc brakes, front and back. That's a, a bit of a key feature in mountain bikes, what, what I would say defines what a mountain bike is nowadays. These are hydraulic disc brakes, so a bit of a feature there. And you have a flat handlebar with some comfy grips, everything in front of you. That's, that's what would be a mountain bike. And this, starting as a mountain bike, you've got hydraulic disc brakes that I mentioned. These are useful when your riding might be a little bit muddy, a little bit wet. They're always going to work. In the past, when you had your brakes grabbing on your rims, uh, similar to how some road bikes still do, as soon as they get wet, you don't get any braking or stopping forces happening on those wheels. So mountain bikes moved discs mm. 10, 15 years ago. And now we're looking at an entry level mountain bike under a thousand bucks with hydraulic disc brakes. So these are a bit of an essential and would define one of the key features of, a, of an entry level mountain bike like this. And I just want to clarify too, because I have heard this around the office, a hardtail versus dual suspension. What would this be? This is a hardtail. So hardtail means if we count the middle of the bike being where your saddle is, the rear end of the bike is fixed. So you have this hardtail solid diamond that makes up the whole bike and this rear triangle is fixed. When you have a dual suspension bike, soft tail as it was in the past, that's how the name came about, you had a bit of a shock inside here. So this rear end would be separate from the front and it might have some pivots. This bike is a hard tail, which means it's very simple, very durable, and it's also where the price is what it is. So you can't have a dual suspension bike with a price that's matching to a hard tail bike in the same segment with the same parts because the cost just isn't possible. Should I start with a hard tail? Yes. Why? Like where, where can this go? Where can I take this bike? Well, I ride a hardtail in places where you shouldn't ride a hardtail. <laughs> so they do have a pretty big window of where you can ride them. It, it depends a lot on rider skill. I always say if anyone's getting into mountain biking, start with a hardtail. Because mm. this is where you're going to learn about rear traction, very important. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn about front end stability and how they can work together and also work against each other to throw you off your bike. If you start with a dual suspension bike, you're kind of skipping a bit of a learning phase of what mountain biking is all about, and that's getting both traction on both those tires. So I would say for anyone starting out mountain biking, hardtail is great. It might seem a little bit rougher than what uh, a dual suspension might say it is, but at least you get really good fundamental skills in how to ride a bike off-road. So. Hardtail would be the way to go if you're looking in this kind of price range. And I think it's important to note as well is I remember getting into road biking and my first bike was a special, 2014 Specialized Roubaix, second hand, and it was lower price, under a thousand bucks. And I was just getting into road biking and I, I stacked it. I was just absolutely destroying the bike. And it's easy to look online and be like, oh, I want this $8,000 bike to start with. But if you mess that up... <laughs> it's expensive. It's expensive. Yeah, it's real fix. expensive. Yes. So a bike uh, like this, no shock in the middle, 
also less maintenance, but less things to get damaged. You've got no bearings anywhere in the back of the frame, which a dual suspension might have. Again, less maintenance, less things to get damaged. So also starting out with a hardtail is, is not a bad thing because things are usually, in terms of frame, a bit more durable. Okay, so what I'm getting from this is hardtail, it has hydraulic disc brakes, which are necessary because if you're going out into the weather, which obviously you are, and you're- Can happen. Can yep. happen. Um, that's the best for braking and- Key feature. Yeah, yeah, key feature. What else am I looking at? What am I looking for? So I got hydraulic disc brakes. You then got what? brakes, you got stopping. I would say the next most important thing would be your going. So that's gonna be your drivetrain, your gear set. So as I started with earlier, what makes a mountain bike good is that you can ride up steep hills. Yeah. You're not really meant to be going that fast while you're pedaling. Mountain biking is all about cruising on the downhills and then working a little bit on the uphills. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit, yeah, a little bit. <laughs> this bike has a nine speed drivetrain. So we determine kind of the quality and durability of drivetrains in how many gears they have on the back. At the moment, mountain bikes usually would come with eight till 12 speed. Um, 12 speed would be current market sort of performance level. This is a nine speed drivetrain. So nine gears on the back. And this bike has two on the front. So in the okay. past, you used to have three on the front. So that was, uh, that was how it was. And they found that no one was really using that big gear. And also when you're riding over rocks or tree stumps, falling down branches, things like that, you get a little bit more clearance when you get rid of that big ring on the front and you put more priority on going up the hill. So this has a really small little inside chain ring. That's gonna be your small gear for going up the hills. You have a pretty kind of mid-sized outer chain ring that you can ride on the street to get to the trails if you need to. Uh, but most of the time you're gonna be sitting in that inside ring if you're pedaling, pedaling uphill. Awesome. So what I gather now, hydraulic disc brakes. We have good group set. You want something with at least a nine speed? Nine speed, nine is, speed. is where I think it gets good. Yeah. Yeah. And just to clarify, this is called the what? So you have your cassette. That's your uh, rear sprockets on the back. And you've got your chain. And then on the front end, these are your chain rings. Oh, okay. So sprockets are made up of cassette and chain rings. And then when you go down, so when you click the, the gear selection and then the chain goes down, is it easier or harder? When you have a smaller sprocket on the back, that's when it gets harder or faster. Yeah, faster, yeah. And when you have a smaller sprocket on the front, that's when it gets easier or slower. Okay. So this bike having two by nine, that's how you would determine your chain ring and rear cassette standard, it's kind of a broad range that covers all bases for entry level mountain biking. As you move further on, you might get more gears, more sprockets on the back, and then you'll see the disappearance of, of this front derailleur. That's what changes the gears. You'll see just a single ring, mm. which we'll talk about on some other bikes. Awesome. All right, so hydraulic disc brakes, at least a two by nine. Two by nine. Um, what about the frame build? What, frame build, this is a this aluminum frame. So is that industry standard? Industry standard for entry level bikes yeah. all the way up to very top, top, top of the range are using aluminium. So it's a really good material for bikes. It's strong, durable, uh, pretty resistant to corrosion. It's not gonna rust like yeah. the old steel frames used to. Uh, really strong as well. Uh, these bikes are designed to kind of suit any kind of rider. Uh, the Premier has, has an alloy durable frame, uh, durable frame to do that. Yeah. You wouldn't go to look at different materials in this kind of price point because there isn't really anything better. And the fact that you can still get an aluminum frame on a top of the range model in some brands signifies that there's nothing wrong with the, with the material. It's just how you, how you use it. Awesome. Um, so I don't want to get too into this bike because I do want to, you know, give it a ride and give it a proper test, sure. <laughs> put it to the test. We are going to move on to bike number two. Yeah. Awesome. Let's get that rolling. 
All right, next up we have bike number two, which is the 2022 Extrada 7, the top of the range Extrada. Um, so the price bracket, it's a bit more, but it's probably for a good reason. Different type right? of bike. Yeah, different, different type of bike. bike. Awesome, so let's get into it. Looking at a step up, let's just say, all right, my budget, it's a little more. This is still entry level, correct? Yeah, I would say still entry level for mm. a premium mountain bike. Okay. Yeah. Um, awesome. So we have a bit more to play with. What's the big difference between the Premier 5, for example, and we have a bigger budget? What do we get with this bike? I would say you're starting to step into a, a different range of performance products. So the old bike, you had brakes, gears, suspension, entry level. Now we're starting to step into performance level, componentry in terms of brakes, the suspension, and, the, and those gears. Frame, still a hardtail frame, yep. might look similar to the other bike, but it's not. Okay. The other bike had an entry-level hardtail aluminium frame. This starts to get a higher-end hardtail frame in the aluminium. Different shaped tubes, you can see there's some, some sharp edges on this. So what's that going to do? Is that aerodynamics or...? That indicates that the tube's been made in a way to make it as light as possible. Mm but still having the same strength. Okay. So that's going to help you ascending, right? Climbing up the big hills. Ascending, yeah. Um, Less weight out of the frame. It's awesome. Always good. So componentry-wise, so now let's get my head around it. First thing we're going to look at, hydraulic disc brakes, just like the Premier. Awesome. Similar. Sim similar. What's, what's different? Not just like. So these are a Shimano hydraulic disc brake. Yeah. The other ones are a, um, a non-branded entry-level hydraulic disc brake. Yeah. Once you start to get that Shimano branding on the products, the quality changes. So you get a much okay. more powerful brake than the other bike, even though technically it is the same type of brake. Yeah. The brake feel at the lever is going to be a bit stronger. Awesome. So better braking, so better stopping power, better which is stopping. great. Yep. Um, what else am I looking at? If I look at this, I, first thing I notice is the cassette. Massive range. Much bigger. <laughs> Much bigger. <laughs> Much bigger. Yeah. And why is that beneficial? Like, well, do we really do we really need that many? Well, if you if you would have noticed on the other bike, you had two rings on yeah. the front. Mm. This bike has one. Okay. So you do away with all the complexity of having an extra derailleur, extra shifter on the handlebar, extra chainring over here. So a bunch of weight saved, also a bunch of stuff gone that might get damaged or break, need okay. servicing and then move all the gear shifting to the back of the bike. To give you the same range as you would have had ah, on those two speeds, yeah. they move it all to the back. Yeah. Okay. So you get one job of changing gears is all done on the back end. So is one by better, than, is that the best? Should I, should I look at two, one, if you had to pick one I, by I'd two by? I'd always go is less complexity yeah. is always good. If you can get the same job done with less stuff, that's always a good thing in mountain biking because things are getting dirty, things are getting damaged, bumped and scraped. It's good if you've only got to worry about one area of the bike yeah. instead of worrying about two. Perfect. And what about this? I was going to mention this on the Premier 5. These, from what I'm told, are called stanchions. Stanchions, yeah. Stanchions. Yep. And what do they do? What's the benefit of this? So this is a suspension fork. Okay. The stanchion is what makes up part of the fork. Mm, so that's what it is. The stanchion is the visible part of the fork that goes up and down. So that's what this, this part here is nice and shiny, it's all polished. That's what's sliding in and out. Inside this fork, you've got a lockout on one side. So see if you've got a bit of a fire road climb to get to that trailhead, or you know you're doing a, a bit of a road commute to, to get to that, yeah. that start of those trails. You can lock this one out with a little lever on the top and then you're not bouncing up and down. So all your energy is going to the back wheel to push you forwards instead of pumping a spring that's in here. So this bike has lockout on one side and then on the other side, you've got an air chamber. That's your spring side. So this fork actually has a chamber inside that you pump up and you can adjust and you can adjust how your fork is gonna compress and feel yeah. based on what pressure you put in. So that's a, a bit of a feature it kind of brings this bike into a more of a performance orientated riding. Okay. So, so getting that fork to have that air sprung pressure, 
is what changes. So what you're saying is, if I lock this out, I can get to the pub quicker. <laughs> you could. This is not a bike for the pub. This is, this is to get you to the trails. Yeah, yeah. awesome. All right, so big step up. I think there's a lot you get with this, the big differences, but obviously that comes with a little bit of a price range difference. You know, Still good value. One's under 1,000. Still, still yeah. pretty good value. Under two grand, you're getting uh, yeah. air sprung front fork, lockout on the fork. You're getting 12 speeds on the back, so single chain ring on the front, and Shimano hydraulic disc brakes. Last thing before we move on, is there a big difference between this price range and an additional thousand or two thousand? Is there much of a difference, or does this do bikes come with all of this componentry and this build from just say fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred? Yeah, it, I, I would say short answer yes. So everything that's on this bike, you would find up to multiple thousands of dollar bike in terms of what the key features are. Yeah, you got Shimano hydraulic disc brakes air sprung front fork with a lockout, 12 speed drivetrain with a single ring on the front. All those parts are gonna be staying on the bikes well up into the thousands. So that's why this is a really good uh, starting point for performance mm. off-road bike. Will it turn heads? Yeah, <laughs> I mean, definitely turn heads. It's, you got a white frame in the mountain bike community is, some might say it's, it's a little bit too much, but I think no well, problem. Can we pair it with white bibs? No, no, no white bibs. No well, we get a fender here. We get a fender. The dirt, you know. Yeah. No. No. All right. But having a white having a white bike definitely turns some heads. You got to keep it clean, but I think the it's wrong heads. It's <laughs> can be. Can be. All right. Uh, that's enough of the 2022 Extrata Seven. Um, again, links will be in the description below, and we're going to move on to the next bike. All right, bike number three, the 2022 Cascade Four, 27 and a half inch. Key features of this bike, I know we went through hydraulic disc brakes, but like you said, there is a big difference between entry, entry level hydraulic disc brakes and mid tier and top yeah. tier. Where there's a, a broad range, yeah. broad range. So these are basic hydraulic disc brakes. I would say the key feature of these type of brakes on this kind of price point is less maintenance. You don't have yeah. to deal with steel cables going rusty, going bad over time, less servicing. That's why they're on this type of bike. I wouldn't say they're here for the phenomenal stopping power. They're definitely safe. They're going to work really well, work in all weathers. So definitely an improvement over a rim brake. Mm -hmm. But they're um, an entry level uh, hydraulic disc brake, more for maintenance than, um, than so, power. So the hydraulic disc brake for the price, that's still pretty, it's pretty, that's amazing. Still pretty yeah. impressive. Yeah, it's good. Um, what about frame build? So now, you know, looking at the bikes we've looked at, is this the same frame build? This would be the same kind of frame as what you would find on a Premier. Yep. So you have pretty basic alloy tubing, nice welds, but not the same as an Extrata. Extrata had that shaping in the top tube, mm. shaping in the down tube, just to get all those grams out that they can. Yeah. This is more to make a, a pretty durable, light enough bike for this kind of price range. It's not going to fail or break on you, but it's, it's definitely a frame that's built for that price that does the job well. One thing I've noticed is it looks like a three by system here. So yeah. we've looked at two, one, and now three. Why would they put a three by system on here? Gears get more expensive, the tighter the tolerances need to be in the back. So that's why our, our high-end Extrata had 12 on the back. Yeah. The Premier had nine, nine on the back. Yeah. This now goes down to seven on the back. Okay. So you've got less gears on the back, less tolerance, and that would mean that this derailleur and this kind of setup can't handle the big range that mm -hmm. we saw in the Extrata with that big cassette. We don't want this rear gear setup to do too much work. We want it to, to do its job, but it, it's not going to have all the pressure and all the, all the forces that you're going to put through the bike just through this. That's why they give you three speeds on the front, and that's to give you a big range of gears without needing to have an expensive, delicate rear end uh, gear set. So that's why you have three on the front, big range, yeah. but nice and simple for the cost. So we can still take this out on the trails, this on the road. This will ride up any sort anything. of hill. Perfect. I mean, yeah. it's exactly what you need, you know, and especially if you replace this cassette, one thing I've noticed on my road bike is I have a 10 speed and I have an 11 speed. The 10 speed is a lot cheaper 
um, than the 11C marginally. But with this, when we go from 12 down to 7, to replace these parts would be a lot cheaper, right? Real basic. So yeah. less gears, less tolerance, less complexity, yeah. less price. Perfect. So all the parts on this are pretty cheap to replace and also very available. So really it comes down to price point. Like price how point. in performance. Like is there a massive performance difference between this and the Extrata 7? Is it huge or is it yes. so yes. Yeah, that's that's why the price is there. So would you, would you go from the Cascade then your next bike could be the Extrata 7 and then onwards? Yeah, there yeah. there'd be enough of a jump between this and an Extrata yeah. to make you'd feel every, every sort of difference. So you'd feel a difference in the brakes, difference in the gears difference in the frame in that yeah. weight and definitely a big difference in that front fork so the complexity yeah. of this kind of fork is is pretty low you've got a couple of springs in there so they take away the bumps and the harsh shocks mm. maybe if you're going down curbs if you hit a big tree root it'll be a bit more comfortable but it's not going to be the most efficient it's not going to be really lightweight but it's it's real low on maintenance so that that front fork is something you don't really need to do anything to yeah. but when you start to move towards the Extrata, for example, you've got to clean your gears a bit better. You've got to make sure that fork is serviced. Yeah. You've got to make sure that your brake pads are, are in check and, and they're all clean. <laughs> this sounds like wear them out. <laughs> I just want something that I can beat up. <laughs> yeah, this is something you can beat up. Yeah, cool. The Extrata uh, is something you've got to look after. Yeah. Uh, well, yes, you can still look after this. Uh, <laughs> you can. Depends, depends you who can. you are. Exactly. Depends who you are. Yeah. Um, what about, one thing I want to know is clipless. You know, do you say clipless or do you say clip-in? Uh, the, the old word was, was clipless. Clipless, which that makes but, no sense. <laughs> yeah, it, make, it makes no sense. But yeah. on these kind of bikes, you're not going to be fixing your feet to the pedal. Ah, okay. So not until you get maybe on the Extrata, where you yeah. want to get a little bit more performance out of your pedaling. Is that experience too? Because you, you might yeah. fall over if you're inexperienced. It's something you, gonna... you build up to and yeah. learn. Once you're confident and you feel like you can ride the bike well, then you might think about going to a clipped-in shoe. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't ride clipped-ins all the time on my mountain bike, so it's, yeah. it's certainly Pre something that you don't need. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this is, again, Cascade 4. Oh, Illumin and, and it's got a kickstand. Oh, that is, that is the biggest feature of this bike, um, kickstand, which is super convenient, by the way. Yeah, if, um, if, if you're riding this kind of bike just to the shops, you can just put the kickstand out, it'll stand by itself. Perfect. So this, this is a feature that you won't find on performance mountain bikes. They're, Are you saying because the people aren't going to the cafes? <laughs> yeah, you, you're, not, you're not really parking up with your mountain bike using yeah. a kickstand. If, if there was one, maybe people would, but, yeah. but no. Kickstand is something you'd find on entry level, so you can, you can ride to the shops if you need to. Perfect. All right, well, that's the Cascade 4. Again, link in the description um, to get the full specs and the price. Awesome. Let's move on to the last bike. All right, the last bike we're gonna be looking at is the Marin Eldridge, the 2022 model, 27 and a half inch. Um, let's start off with a little guess. What do you think the price is of this? Because we've looked at the Premier 5. Yeah. We've also looked at the, the highest end one that we have, the Extrata 7. Um, so looking at this, what do you think this is worth? L looking at this, for, for me, I kind of tick things off with features on the bike. So. We got hydraulic disc brakes on this bike. Yep. It's a positive. You got a two by eight speed drive train. So not quite as good as that Premier, but mm -hmm. but the Cascade Four had a seven. Cascade had a seven. So it's going to so be it's higher than, than that. The Cascade. Yeah. You've got a front fork with no lockout on it, just springs inside. So basic fork, but with a Suntour name on it. So it's a bit of a name you can get behind. And it's a Marin, so mm. Marins are a, they've been around since mountain biking began. They were part of the crew that first started putting bikes on, on dirt roads to go downhill. So there's a lot of brand cachet in, in having a Marin. Um, I would guess it would be around the $800 mark. Mm, like spot on, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah? Pretty much. <laughs> oh, there you go. Sell the thousand, yeah. which is a yeah, bonus. Yeah, less than a thousand, um, more than that five hundred dollar range. So what yeah. I found interesting, just observing this from what you've taught me so far, right, is 
two chain rings up front, right? It looks like it has a, a nicer hydraulic disc brakes in the rear than the Cascade 4. Yeah. Yeah, would that be correct? Yeah, these are a, a Tektro brake. So oh, okay. As What's... soon as you start seeing brand names on brakes, yeah. that's when they get a bit of reputation as being good. Yeah. So if, if I see a Tektro, for example, on a brake, I know that a Tektro brake is, is going to work really well. Yeah. I can get spare parts if I need to. I can ride it in the wet. It, it's always going to be pretty consistent. And you've got a bit of, bit of name um, to back that brake up. So you're correct. Not quite the same level as an Extrata in terms of what we looked at, but definitely a step up from the, from the Cascade. Awesome. And like you said, it's going to have basic componentry because of the price range. Yeah. I personally love the colorway of this, and if color is uh, important, yeah, co color is important. Yeah. <laughs> I don't always see color, but uh. <laughs> yes, color color on frames is real important for some people. Uh, it's a tough one. I'm trying to think out of the bikes that you've shown me today and that we've looked at, what would I buy? Entry uh, level. Entry learning. level under a thousand. What would I buy? My pick again. This is just my pick. I would buy this bike personally. Um, because I like the colorway. And it's not a bad and, bike. And it's not a bad bike. Yeah. Um, but the Premier 5, I did like that kind of Bumblebee-esque uh, colorway yeah. as well. <laughs> it's a tough one. Um, but all in all, you get a lot for this. And like you said, you get the brand name, Marin, well-established in the industry. Um, you can beat this bike up, no dramas, cheaper components to replace. Um, unlike, you know, the bigger cassette in the back where like, you know, yeah. you actually have to maintain that. Yeah. Still the same range as yeah. that, that other bike, so you can still pedal up anything that you need to. Anything? Are you sure? I mean, with it, <laughs> yeah, with it, I reckon you could do it. Anything. Let's just say anything, anything on anything? this bike, right, right. no problem. Subjective. Those who are uh, watching, do not try anything when it comes to yeah. ascents, right? Um, just Peter here. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's wrap that up. Um, thank you for showing me the bikes, and let's take this off the stand and talk about it in detail. Sure. All of them. Perfect. If you've made it this far, thank you so much for tuning thank in. You. Um, again, Peter, bike expert. Supposed. Uh, <laughs> I call myself a bike expert. But. Myself, uh, mountain bike kook, unfortunately. But I'll get there. You know, Peter's going to take me out on the trails of Sydney. Eventually. Um, eventually, w one day. Maybe. Um, maybe. All right. Let's, let's kind of recap what we've gone through. We looked at four bikes, four different price points, kind of. Uh, we had the Premier 5. We had the Cascade. And then we had the Marin Eldridge, all kind of within the same same range. Then we had that big jump from the Extrata Seven. Up to the Extrata performance yeah. bike, performance entry bike, level bike. Yeah, yeah. Um, all under two thousand dollars, and I feel like you get a lot. I feel like I could really enter the sport, in, on a good budget, a proper budget. Yeah. Um, so looking at all the bikes, I've told you that this beauty right here, I would get that because just the value you get, and I like the colorway. Again. Always comes back to the color, right? Yeah. <laughs> what would you get? Uh, for me, I always want to blow the budget as much as possible, <laughs> so I, I would go straight for the Extrata Seven, uh, just because I know the brakes are going to be better. Yeah. You're going to have a much better drivetrain. I could keep that frame, maybe upgrade it in the future because mm. I know I know it's a good it's, frame. Yeah. So it's different kind of bike, but I'd always spend as much as I could. Yeah. And I don't care about the color. <laughs> as long as it does the sure? things, it does the things. I don't care. Uh, fair enough. All right. If I'm going to the coffee shop, I want to turn heads, right? And I think this will do it. Cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, going back to the hot products and what we have in stock. Again, everyone's going to need this. I use one on my road bike. I wouldn't go anywhere without it. And I'm assuming it's the same with mountain bikes. Um, and you could probably connect it to Strava. Can you do that? Connect to Strava. To, for yeah. routes. Connect to your phone. It, you for can trails. See, see text messages. Yeah. See emergency phone calls. I Why are you taking so long? <laughs> Please come home. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can do that. Yeah. Which is, you know, a good thing and a bad thing. Because if, you know, the wife is saying, you know, have you bought another bike? And you see that message while you're riding the bike? Maybe not. Uh, <laughs> so this in stock, you can get that in the link down below. Then you have the two wheels. Uh, tires. <laughs> tires. 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 Um, all right. So Big brand name, Maxxis Tire. Yeah. V Tire, I think is a good product. Mm. Worth trying, something new. Both, both available. Both available. Awesome. 
Um, again, paying a little bit for the brand, not so much, a little bit cheaper, right? Cheaper, yeah. And yep. necessary tubeless kit, from what I gather, you can't get a mountain bike without this. But you can, you can. You can, but, but you're going you're to need it, it soon. eventually. You're going to need it soon. Perfect. Um, these are all available, again, on bicyclesonline.com.au, and the description will be in the below, down below. <laughs> down below. Um, again, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate it, and we will see you on episode number two. And if you liked it, please, please, for Peter's sake, right? <laughs> um, leave a comment down below. And some questions. Um, and questions, yeah, that, that's a big thing. Definitely some um, things that we missed or maybe we didn't point out that you want a bit more info on. Yeah. Leave, leave questions below um, and we can try and try and answer them. Yeah, that would be awesome. Um, and again, um, it's from how-tos uh, to bike reviews, so anything in between. If you want to know something, we'll answer it. Um, coming from a kook to an expert, um, anything. We'll have some guests in. So please, again, leave a comment down below. Until next time. See ya. See ya.